Joining us now from our Phoenix affiliate, KNXV, Dr. Charles Seisler, author of the new study on light and sleep. From Boston, Dr. Ted Baker, founder of Shift Work Systems. And joining us here in Washington, James Fadden, who suffers from sleep disorder. Dr. Seisler, I'm, I'm inferring from everything we just learned in, in Dave Marish's report that 150 years ago, before the invention of the light bulb, people slept better. True? Yes, I, I imagine that that is probably true. We, we not only slept better, but we really slept at a different time. We probably reached the peak drive for sleep somewhere around midnight or one o'clock in the morning. We don't even really think of midnight as the middle of the night anymore with shows like this one on near that time. We really think of it as the beginning of the night. But if we didn't have exposure to all this artificial light, it really would be near the middle of the night, which would be when our peak sleep drive would be. So since we are, in effect, tampering with the, the normal sleep cycle, Dr. Baker, it, it seems to me that all of us, to one degree or another, are going to find that we are a little bit disoriented when it comes to sleep. Well, yes, certainly. And the population that we're dealing with, Ted, is a population of uh, several million people in the country who have the most severe disruption of their circadian rhythm, and that's the night workers and the shift workers. Um, I understand from talking to your folks here in Boston that several of them work for you. Um, and the challenges of this lifestyle are very significant in that these people uh, are forced to, by virtue of their job requirements, work through the night and then try to sleep in the daytime. Well, actually, it's not even that, it's not even that happy a, a circumstance. They work deep into the night and then are expected to be up again at a reasonably early time in the morning, which, which in fact, leads me to a question. And, Dr. Seisler, let me come back to you on this one. Uh, the young lady who was working in the, uh, at, the, uh, at the coffee counter there, yes. uh, again, there was sort of the implication that she, she sleeps short nights during the week and then, as a lot of us try to do, catches up over the weekend. Can you? Well, you can try to catch up on sleep, and that can uh, attempt to deal with the sleep debt question, but that usually sends a disorganizing signal to your biological clock in the brain, which expects a regular bedtime and a regular wake time in order to keep in sync with the 24-hour day. Right now, with our, the way the artificial light propels our circadian system to a later hour, we reach the peak drive for sleep near our wake time instead of in the middle of our, in the middle of our night. You're telling me we, we reach the peak time then just before we wake up in the morning? Right, at around 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Is when we're actually in our deepest sleep? Well, that's when the peak drive from our internal clock is coming for sleep. And, and that's just when we have to start waking up? Right, and I think that that single-handedly uh, has propelled the caffeine industry uh, to the multi-billion dollar industry that it is, uh, because it, it is probably the most widely used drug in industrial societies. Mr. Fadden, you were someone who suffers from, and, and forgive me, I don't know precisely what kind of sleep disorder you have, but obviously yours is more serious than the kind of loginess that many of us feel during the day. Just, just tell me, first of all, what kind of sleep disorder you have. Well, the technical term for it is hypernictemeral syndrome or sometimes known as non-24-hour sleep-wake cycle disorder. Uh, Dr. Seisler indicated that the, the peak drive for sleepiness occurs just when someone is uh, about to get up or the period of time when one is expected to get up. Uh, in some individuals, such as myself, uh, this goes uh, beyond uh, a level that can be overcome through willpower and, and in fact, uh, becomes an, an illness, the, the sleep cycle takes on a life of its own that is independent of the 24-hour cycle. Now, when you say that, are, are you suggesting that when you need to go to sleep, you can't go to sleep, and when it's time to wake up, you can't wake up? Or, or is it just at one end or the other end that you have it's, the it's, it, before the problem? Before I received treatment, it was, in fact, at both ends. That I, When I needed to go to sleep, I would be wide awake. When I needed to get up, uh, I couldn't get up. And, and how is this sort of thing treated? Uh, I've been treated with a regimen that involves using uh, the regimen devised at the NIH involving an intense type of light that I use in the morning immediately upon waking up. In fact, I have the lights arranged so that they come on, uh, by, on with a timer right next to my bed. Uh, intense exposure to this light in the morning. And then in the evening, after 7 or 8 in the evening, I try to avoid light exposure as much as possible. Uh, I use dimmer switches on the lights in the rooms that I'm in, 
and I have some, some special dark goggles I, that I can show you that, that filter out bright light. It's, I wear these in, in the evening. They're sort of handy in a television studio, too. Yes, they do, uh, they do cut see. down the glare. So, so you actually wear those then for, what, a couple of hours before you go to sleep? At least, at least a couple of hours, yes. All right. Gentlemen, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break, and, and then when we come back, I'd like each of you, from your own perspective, to give uh, our viewers who are watching now and, and who clearly probably wouldn't be watching if they could be asleep, uh, some tips on what they can do to improve their sleep habits. We'll be back in a moment.